last night around five in the morning, we had some serious downpours, some heavy thunder. I don't remember a ton of wind, but there must have been at least one gust. And what happened was on this very same tree, the first large fork broke off. So what I'm left with is this one big branch, which starts, if I had to guess, I would say that this is about 20 feet off the ground. And it, one piece of it comes over this way. And luckily, I think it just hit the wooden part of my truck. I got a little bit of it leaning on a bobcat over there. And then the rest of the branch comes down and my log splitter is literally right under there. And this is where my wood pile usually goes. My goal is to start cleaning this up today. And we're just gonna kind of see how far we get. This is gonna take me more than one day to do. And my main concern with this is, is because that branch is basically just leaning against the tree. So it's very important that I don't end up being underneath this branch when it falls. Hey folks, how you doing? I thought today I would bring you along with me as I start cleaning up this branch that uh, fell during the storm. I mean, it's basically like half of a tree. I just wanna say with this video, I'm not looking to teach anybody how to remove a branch like this. I'm not looking to teach you how to be the fastest with a chainsaw. This video is for entertainment only. My weapon of choice to get started is gonna be this little uh, T535i XP battery powered chainsaw. And I'm gonna be using the BLI 200 battery, which I believe it says it's got a 5.2 uh, amp hour charge. This chainsaw is awesome. It's super lightweight. It's super powerful, and if you're gonna basically be cutting anything that's about three quarters the width of the bar, uh, this is the saw to use. I have a steel O20, but compared to the weight of the O20, the noise of the O20, uh, the leaking gas of the O20, I just really like the, the ease of you hit the on button, you squeeze the trigger, and you're going with the battery. Before we get uh, going with the new battery, we do need to put a, put a new chain on. There's really not too much left of the cutters, of the cutters on this chain. So we're just gonna go ahead and swap it out with a new one. A lot of junk in there. You know, the best tool to clean this off is to just put a good pair of safety glasses on and hit it with the air compressor. So I'm gonna go do that. Whenever you take the bar off, you wanna take a scraper and clean all the junk out in the groove here. You see all this junk coming out? Because what happens is if you leave that junk in there, the oil can't circulate around your guide bar. So it's just habit for me that basically anytime I take the bar off, I'll go ahead and do that. And I usually push it away from the end of the bar so I don't jam it into the, the turning mechanism there. But then what I'll do is I'll take the air compressor and just blow all that out. And it'll be like a brand new, a brand new bar as far as that channel goes. And one time when I was, I think I was in high school, um, we were doing something with the chainsaw and the, the chain was getting really hot and sticking to the bar. So when we took it to the dealer to figure out what was going on, he basically was like, guys, you need, to, you need to clean out this channel. So that's definitely something that if you guys use a chainsaw, you should do. Um, basically, anytime you take the bar off, clean that channel out. All right, I just thought it would be interesting to show you guys the difference between the, uh, the old cutter and the new cutter on the chain. And I've hand filed this chain, I can't tell you how many times. Um, but this, this chain has only been, the old chain has only been hand filed. But this is why we're replacing it, because we're getting near the end of life on the chain. 
And rather than mess around with a chain that's near the end, I figure we'll just start this project with something fresh. All right, we got everything cleaned up and let's see if we can get this on and make it look like we know what we're doing. For some reason, getting the chain on the bar is like my biggest obstacle. Get it around first, then If we can find the screw hole. All right, so it turns out the little screw thing is on the cover. That shows you why you shouldn't be watching this video. And we'll see if we can get that to match up with the hole. So the back is on, but we're not quite lined up with the screw here. I wonder if there's a secret to this. There we go. Use the bar to adjust it. Don't use the screw. Got a little bit of tension there. Push down on the front, tighten the bar. I like it to be snug, but still move fairly easily around the bar. And then I'll push the nose up and do the final tightening. And you don't want to kill it because you don't want to strip anything out. But that to me is good. And now all we need to do is top off the bar and chain oil. I really like using these little uh, syrup bottles because I can control the pour so much better. So I can fill the tank, the small tank, probably four times with this, and the bigger saws probably only three times, but it's worth the extra effort to fill that because it's so much easier, uh, you know, to just open and start going, plus I can get this in a lot better. All right, and then the battery's charged. So you just kind of slide it in there, it clicks in, and we can check our battery like that. And one thing about this Husqvarna saw is you've only got two buttons. On top here, you've got the power button, but then they've got something called the eco button, which is a reduced power mode. By using the eco button, the saw doesn't cut as quickly, but the battery lasts a lot longer. But the other advantage to using the eco button is because the saw's not going as fast, it's a little bit quieter, and it's just a little bit more of a pleasure to use, honestly, with the eco button engaged. You know, if you're cutting a lot of smaller stuff. Um, so I prefer to use the saw on eco mode, unless I'm just having a day where I really want to put a nice edge on the chain and just go nuts cutting. But for most stuff, I just use eco mode. All right, guys, we're just about ready to get going and common sense would dictate I should start on this side because I'm gonna be putting all the debris in the dump truck in the back of the dump truck. However, the branch is leaning against the trunk of the tree. So there's no way that the, the main weight of this branch can go that way. When, it, when this falls, it's coming this way, it's coming this way. So what I'm gonna do is leave all the weight over there of all those, those branches by my truck. And I'm gonna see if I can just take some of the weight off and get some of the the branches out of the way over here. I'm not gonna cut anything 
like there's one branch right over here that's actually supporting the weight of the tree. This might be the one that lets it fall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that and just see if I can just get some of these other branches out of the way before things fall. But any branches that have weight on them, I wanna be very careful before I cut them, number one, uh, because if they have weight, they can spring back and hit you in the face and, and really injure you. So we don't want that to happen. But number two, I don't wanna cut any branches that have some weight on them because that's when the tree, that might be the branch that triggers the whole tree to fall. And then uh, just to be safe, I am gonna go ahead and put my, um, my helmet on and uh, my chaps. I thought it'd be a good idea to, to store my chaps in this little Rubbermaid container so the mice don't move into them when I'm not using them. All right, guys, I got about as much as I want to get on the direction it's going to fall. So now what I'm going to do is see if I can get some of these branches down by the log splitter. And then we'll, we'll kind of see where things are after that. I just get the feeling once I cut the branches on the, the side closest to my truck, the weight's going to be gone and it's, the branch is going to want to start to roll. So I want to leave that weight till the end. All right, guys, I got a bunch of the branches off at the end of the tree here. And what I want to do next is grab a tool called a power pruner. It's like a weed whacker with like a small chainsaw on the end. And I want to take off a little bit of the end here. About 10 feet from the end of the branch, there's nothing below. So I want to get that off so I lighten the, the weight of the branch 
but also so when the branch falls, it doesn't fall on top of my log splitter, which would be bad. I was amazed at how well that power pruner worked. I don't know if you guys can see how large that log is there that I cut, but that is probably eight or nine inches in diameter. So that, that really is gonna help to get a lot of weight off of, the, off of the limb. All right, guys, well, we're gonna call it a day, like I said here, and um, tomorrow we'll be back at it, and hopefully we can get this guy down without damaging any of my equipment or myself and then we can start worrying about um, cleaning up the mess. So we'll see you tomorrow, guys. Hey guys, how you doing? We're back at it again. And the first thing I did this morning was go ahead and put a rope on the tree to kind of keep it from going back this way. Uh, and also give me a way to, to, to pull on it if I need to. If I'm not sure I'm gonna need that rope or not, but it's better for it to be in place just in case I do. Uh, my goal today or to start is gonna be just to, to cut this branch over my truck off and then I'm gonna see if I can maybe cut a few more branches by the base of the tree. But again, anything that's got tension on it, I'm not gonna cut it you know, right now. I just wanna clean it up. The only other thing I wanted to say was just about this, this little chainsaw here. Um, so, you know, after using it yesterday, I went inside and, and pressed the button and uh, it's still got four bars. I mean, in eco mode, this thing lasts forever. And, uh, you know, I just, I really do like the battery saws for the smaller stuff. And I, uh, I'm not trying to create a gas versus battery argument. I'm just saying, it seems like these days, if you've got stuff under eight inches in diameter, to cut with a couple batteries, you could do an electric saw and cut just as quickly, just as productively and with less noise and fuel fumes uh, than if you use a gas. And uh, I feel, you know, electric is also much lighter and I'm pretty sure it doesn't vibrate as much either. I'm very impressed by battery.
All right, guys, so I got everything cleaned up and my next thing to do would be to cut the branch that's on top of the truck there. But um, I'm not really sure if that's the way I want to go. What I'm thinking I might do is um, there's a branch, this small branch over here. I think I'm going to cut that one very carefully um, higher off the ground. And then that's going to leave a bunch of weight on this branch over here. And then this branch I can cut. And I think when I cut this branch, the, the weight of the tree is going to make it want to come this way. I don't want to be standing in the truck where it's nowhere to go if something goes wrong. These two branches underneath should be enough to brace it where that's going to kind of be the pivot point. It's coming this way. The fence has to be replaced anyways. So we'll, we'll just kind of take it as it comes. All right, guys, well, she's down and things went pretty much the way I thought they'd go, but I thought, I thought the tree was gonna come more towards me when it fell, where it just went like straight down. Did catch the fence, the fence had to be replaced anyways, and whatever damage was done over here was done in the fall, so there's really not much I can say about that. The tree kind of fell on the cylinder for the, the bucket roll on the bobcat there. Hopefully it, um, you know, it was just a light graze and it didn't, it didn't bend it or anything. That's, that's the only damage that I'm really concerned about, but it looks, it looks straight. And if it's not straight, um, I mean, there's nothing, I, I couldn't have predicted this tree was going to fall. I don't think I hit the backhoe when it fell down. I think I hit the fence. You can see where the tree must have hit the fence and then that pulled it towards the backhoe. So I think we're fine on the backhoe too. The next thing I want to do is just grab my electric saw and uh, drop this one branch. I'll see if I can notch it so it 
it favors going this way. And then I'm just gonna leave it for now because uh, it's almost lunchtime and after lunch, I'm supposed to go see Top Gun Maverick with my son. So um, that might be it for today. I got out last night after the movie and did some more cleaning up and I didn't bother filming because I really, I really just wanted to get some of the brush cleaned up. I cleaned up the pile I made over there, uh, cut up all the stuff, the branches and the logs over here. And you know, we've left it basically down to just this one chunk of wood, which I'm pretty sure I can use um, to make some chainsaw sharpening videos. So I think we're gonna stop here as far as cutting this up goes. I've got the set of ramps here, which is very handy for walking stuff up on the truck. And then I've just got that pile over there to go as far as cleaning stuff up goes. You know, some of you may have been noticing I was cutting the pieces. I've been cutting the pieces fairly small to put in the truck. And if I'm loading stuff into a pickup or my dump truck, I try to keep my pieces like six feet, pretty much six feet long. Some of them may reach to eight because it's easier to kind of pack them into the truck. As I'm bringing them up, I'm not just making one big pile in the middle. I'm kind of throwing the stuff around and making sure I fill the sides as well. And then once I get like three feet of fluff, I'll walk over the pile, pack it down. <coughs> Excuse me, that was a bug. So once I get the pile, like three feet of fluff, I'll go walk around, press it down. If you're renting a chipper, by all means, you know, leave, leave the branches long enough that you can drag them to the chipper and, uh, and feed them into the chipper and, and it's less work. If you've got the chipper, as you're cutting, you know, try to realize where the branches fork in a bad direction and make your cuts at those forks so you can just bring them to the chipper and feed them right in. You know, I do have my, my three-legged ladder here, which comes in really handy for pruning. You know, if you're pruning a large shrub or something, uh, this is also extremely handy for cleaning the gutters on a first floor of a house. So because you've got the three legs there, it's much more stable than if you use a four, you know, a four-footed ladder uh, on uneven ground. I mean, it's extremely stable. So this ladder you actually would not use if you're like putting it on a floor or concrete or something, but it's, it's simply awesome for uh, unstable ground. And sometimes I'll use the ladder the way it is if I need to get up and down the truck. But for the amount of, of debris I have, I just brought the ramps out and I can just pick up a few branches, walk them over and walk them on the truck. And then the other thing I wanted to just point out to anybody new to this is uh, this is a five tine manure fork. It's, it's one of my favorite tools. And besides using this for mulching, you know, when you're cleaning up your debris, what you can do is uh, is you just kind of use this like a rake to get the heavy stuff. Maybe we can get a video later, but you use it kind of like a rake. And then once you get a pile, you can just go ahead and scoop it up. So you don't even mess with a fine toothed rake until you got the, uh, the majority of the stuff done with this five tine manure fork. If you're cutting wood on a lawn, you really wanna to try to avoid leaving piles of sawdust like this. So when I'm done today, I'm gonna to get my backpack blower and I'll probably just blow all this sawdust into the bed over this way. But um, what I've been doing is, is cutting everything into longer branches for two reasons. Number one, it's easier to carry, you know, the longer branches to get them, to get them over here. Uh, than it is to cut a bunch of small branches. So then I can use my little sawhorse there to cut them later, you know, when the time is right. Uh, but also just because I want to minimize the number of cuts I make over the grass. You're really not seeing a ton of sawdust except where I cut some of the larger branches and, you know, I made some piles, but I will do my best to just blow all that sawdust off the lawn. And while we're talking about things, I do just want to say that you know, this is how much wood I've gotten from the tree so far. 
uh, you know, and all this wood, everything you're seeing here was cut with that little Husqvarna chainsaw and I've been using echo mode. Hey guys, how you doing? Well, we're back at it again. And uh, like I said in the clip before, after this one, I did go ahead and clean up a lot of the branches last night off film because I want to get all the, uh, the debris in the truck so I can get this stuff to the dump before the dump closes at three today. Um, so all we have left to do today is basically pick up the pile of brush that I left over that way and then just rake up, you know, the, the heavy debris and clean off the lawn. So we should have a, a fairly easy day, which I just jinxed myself. I'm sure many of you are wondering what I thought of Top Gun Maverick. Uh, I'm going to give it two thumbs up. It was a fun movie. Highly recommend it. The only other thing I did want to say was uh, about this little chainsaw. So I'm on now, now on day three. Uh, the chainsaw is turned off. But I did just want to say that, you know, I've still got three bars in my battery after everything you've seen so far. Uh, the blade is still, is still sharp. There's one point when I was cutting the log and I went to, to start the saw and, and I got myself on camera pushing the button. And I just think it's interesting because something with battery saws you don't really realize is you're not doing this every time you go to start the chainsaw. You're doing, you're doing this. And that's yet another reason where, yeah, the battery saw may still be a little bit slower than the gas saw, especially for you die-hard porting guys and competition sharpening guys. But you're still, you're just, you're hitting a button and cutting as opposed to pulling it two or three times and cutting. So that, that's another difference. There are times a gas saw is the only option, but I'm trying to say that for, you know, six to eight inch stuff and below, I, I, I think a battery saw is the way to go if you're doing it a lot. Sometimes I have trouble making a declarative statement like that because I know there's always gonna be somebody that, that enjoys creating conflict who's gonna come on and tell me, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. So we're just gonna let those people make their own videos on their channels and uh, block them on my channel because I'm perfectly fine if you disagree with me, but there's some people that actually enjoy stirring up a conflict and that's, that's not what I'm here for. So let me set the camera up and I'll show you what me walking up the ramp a little bit and uh, we'll see where this video heads. Thanks guys.
I just gave this log a little bit of a roll. So now it's not touching the grass and I'm not gonna have a patch of dead grass underneath this log. Now I know today I could just grab a saw and just buzz it, you know, into log lengths, rake up the sawdust and be done with it. But I think we're gonna leave this and maybe we can do some sharpening videos or, you know, I have four gas chainsaws, which I rarely use anymore unless it's big stuff like this. So maybe I can, um, you know, work them a little bit, just cutting up this log or making some noodles in this log. But uh, that's what I was doing there. All right, guys, well, that's gonna wrap this one up. I am happy to say that I worked slowly and carefully and luckily I didn't get injured. Um, I'm sure anybody that does this for a living saw a ton of things I did wrong. So please don't think anything I did in this video means I know what I'm doing. Uh, I was guessing, but hopefully I was guessing from a far enough distance that if something did go wrong, the tree didn't land on me. Uh, one last thing I did want to mention about the, um, the sawdust in the video. You know, the reason I blow the sawdust off the lawn isn't so much to keep things looking neat, although it does, but if you leave a ton of sawdust on a lawn, when the bacteria come to break it down, they use a lot of nitrogen. So what'll happen is, is if you leave a bunch of sawdust there, your lawn, uh, it basically turns yellow and, and almost looks like it's dying because the bacteria has taken so much nitrogen from the soil. So yes, it does look better, but that's the reason I always go out of my way to blow the sawdust off the lawn. Um, only other thought is uh, th this video was not sponsored by Husqvarna battery chainsaws, but I really do think battery chainsaws are an awesome thing. Um, for all the reason that the marketing of the guys that sell battery chainsaws say, and more. And I'm not saying battery saws, you know, are gonna be used for your giant stuff, but I'm telling you for stuff six to eight inches and less, I think battery is the way to go unless you're like production or even just don't have access to, um, to power. You know, I think a couple batteries for what most people do is enough where you can be charging one while using the other and uh, you'll still have the charge. Please go ahead and like the video. Please share the video on Facebook or Twitter or whatever the popular social media uh, is these days. And if you like videos like this, um, I make videos about anything from uh, chainsaws, chainsaw sharpening, landscape design, landscape installation, landscape maintenance videos, a um, little bit of anything. That, uh, that I'm interested in. So feel free to subscribe if you want some more content like this. Uh, thanks a lot for watching today, folks, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.